Good morning and welcome to my channel. My name is Maggie. I'm a data scientist working in a tech startup based in Canada. For those of you who know me, you might notice that this is not my apartment in Toronto, and that's because I'm currently visiting my family in China and working from here remotely. I'm going to take you on a day in the life with me today, working as a part-time content creator and full-time data scientist with 13-hour time difference. Like many others, because of the pandemic, I have been mostly staying in Toronto for the past three years and I'm super grateful to have this opportunity to be able to spend some time with my family while not putting my life and career on hold. I have five meetings on my calendar today, two with brands for content partnerships and three for work. Before I start my work day, I just want to make a disclaimer that this is not what a super typical day look like in my life. I don't usually have these much meetings in one day. Working until midnight is definitely not the norm for me when I'm back in my apartment in Toronto, but my evening time has become extremely valuable since I arrived in Asia because it's one of the only times that I can communicate with my Canadian colleagues without disrupting their workday too much because of my personal travel schedule. And I want to be fully transparent with you guys that this is probably the busiest day I've had so far since coming back. Anyways, please prioritize taking care of your physical and mental well-being. You know what your limit is and how you work best. And now let's get the day started. My first thing on the agenda today is a meeting with a brand that I'm absolutely in love with. Generally, I have a very high standard for brand collaborations. I personally vet all of them and say no to more brands than I say yes to. I was really excited for this one because it doesn't happen every day when you get to work with brands who have products that you love and use every single day at work. I can't wait for you guys to see the final product in the upcoming weeks on my Instagram and here on YouTube. After my call, I went downstairs for some breakfast. My family's out of the house by this point. My parents are at work and my 10 year old sister is at school. But they always leave warm breakfast in the kitchen for me to find. This is definitely one of the perks and luxuries for living at home. Porridge is not something I make for myself in Toronto, but I do enjoy them. And call me weird, but I don't think I would mind eating just this for the whole month that I'm here. After breakfast and making myself some coffee, I was ready to start my work day. I made myself two separate workstations at home, one for my data scientist work and another for content creation work. Working all day by myself at home, I find the separation of space to help a lot in terms of productivity. My environment sets the scene for my brain and it signals what I'm here in this space to accomplish. This morning, I have a company-wide product release meeting at 9.30 a.m. We usually have these roughly once every month for the product team to share it with the rest of the company, what updates they're releasing and how these bug fixes or new features impact both external and internal users. But when I was ready to get on just a minute before the meeting starts, I couldn't find it on my team's calendar. As it turns out, this meeting has been pushed to Monday of next week. Lesson of the day, friends, check your email often or turn on the notification. Oh well, at least I caught up on all my team's communications. My evening time in Asia are usually for work meetings, so my morning time I spend a chunk of it catching up with my boyfriend who is in Toronto and looking after our cat. We have 13 hour time difference, it's 9.30 am here. So 8.30 pm in Toronto, I decided to call him up first before I hunker down for a block of focused time at work. One of the many products that my company offers is technically complex and my team is working on generating tangible business use cases through a storytelling lens, leveraging big data tools through trial and error. That was a mouthful, but essentially the impact that we are creating here is to simplify the selling process and shorten onboarding time for customers. This morning, I'm preparing materials for a meeting with the chief product officer that would happen later in the day. 
I will be presenting to her what the team has done so far, asking for feedback and get alignment on timeline and next step directions. This is not pure typical data science work, but I really enjoy it because it pushes me outside of my comfort zone. I'm gaining a user-centric mindset, deep product knowledge, and valuable communication skills to a non-technical audience that are really important if I want to stay working at a product company. While I'm here back at home, my dad usually pops by from work to either have lunch with me at home or takes me out for lunch. Uh, he's on a business trip today, so I'm making myself some cabbage noodle soup. I know it's super dependent of me and childlike and the luxury to be taken care of in terms of cooking, but that's just how I feel every time I come back to my parents' house, just a child waiting to be fed and taken out. This sometimes gives off the impression to relatives who don't know me very well that I'm a 24-year-old who never leaves the house during the day, stares at a computer all day, and waits to be fed for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Which I can't blame them because that's what they see for the few days for every couple of years that I come home. But I do wish deep down that they could see the other side of me as well when I'm that independent boss lady who takes care of herself and have a go-getter attitude for her career, works hard to plan content and create values to others. Maybe it's the Asian in me that's just always looking for approval, but I'm starting to accept that this is the reality of growing up and living a totally different life outside of your childhood home, especially one that is 10,000 kilometers away. After feeding myself, I lounged around on the couch for a bit, checking my phone. I found a lack of motivation to get back to working and I needed to get some focus coding work done this afternoon. So I decided it would be good to have some fresh air and a change of scenery. I got ready, dragged myself outside and was on my way to Starbucks. For those of you who don't know, my data scientist position is situated within the R&D team. My main responsibilities are split between mid and long term research projects and short term ad hoc analysis tasks. This afternoon, I'm coding in Vertex AI on the Google Cloud platform for a demand forecasting R&D project that I've been working on on and off for the past few months. This project is kind of similar to a machine learning project that you would expect at companies like Uber. For example, a direct analogy that I can draw is that ride-sharing companies like Uber need to predict when and where riders might be to better direct resources such as drivers. I highly recommend checking out Uber's engineering blog, by the way. They have really great resources in terms of machine learning in practice. I'll also link it in the description box below. My background is in statistics, human geography, and GIS, so I get really excited about geospatial work. And if you're interested in projects like this, you can also search up the term spatial temporal. Because this is a research project, it will most likely not be ready to be turned into a product until the following year at the earliest. I am also still at a very early stage, trying to fit a few models and checking results starting from the very basics. After about three hours of focused coding time, I headed home to grab some food and got ready for my second brand meeting. I thought this meeting was for a potential collaboration with a different account. I actually really enjoy working with other content creators and create valuable content together, but this turned out to be a sales pitch. It was so frustrating and annoying, especially because I was caught off guard. I was told this would be a 10 minute call, but it was hitting the 30 minutes mark and dig into valuable time that I have with my family and I definitely didn't want to sit there and listen. Can you tell I was really grumpy compared to earlier this morning when I was excited for the other call? People on the other side could tell that I didn't want to be there so the meeting ended with comments like you're impatient and do not trust people which was definitely not asked for. I know I should just brush it off, but I already had a really long day and just couldn't shake this off of me for some reason. And I didn't have any more meetings until 9pm, so I just went off and enjoyed dinner with my family, 
spent some me time on the couch and went to bed for a much needed nap. When I woke up, my sister came back from her origami class, so I spent some time helping her with her English homework, played some fitness game together with my family, before getting ready for my final two meetings of the day. Every Friday, the entire research team comes together for a weekly check-in meeting. It is now 10 p.m., so 9 a.m. in Toronto. I didn't want to push to move this meeting time too much because I felt bad to potentially cause inconveniences to my colleagues just because I decided to travel to Asia to visit my family for a month. This meeting is usually really relaxed. Each of us shares something that we've been working on this week and everyone else, including the manager, would provide really helpful feedback for steps to move forward. And finally, my next back-to-back -back and final meeting of the day at 11 p.m. was with the chief product officer and my team. This meeting was a bit stressful because the chief product officer is also the co-founder of the company, but it went well overall. Each of us shared a different aspect of the project we're working on and received really valuable information that can help us push forward. I also genuinely enjoy talking to people within the company that I don't normally work with on a day-to-day -day basis, just for some different and fresh perspectives and insights. This is it for my day. I was so exhausted and definitely hope not to have these many meetings again in a day. If you want to see what more of a typical day look like for me, definitely check out my other day in life videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.